Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost and in today's episode of The Complete Picture, we're going to be talking about how to seamlessly integrate Lightroom in Photoshop. More specifically, we're going to take a look at how to export files out of Lightroom after you've created the perfect negative, hand them off to Photoshop, and then run an action in Photoshop to process all of those files even further. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I've selected just six images here in Lightroom. Now they are all horizontal. That was the only kind of requirement for this because I'm going to be taking them into Photoshop and running an action in order to add some edge effects. So if I had some horizontal and some vertical, I would need to actually create two actions in Photoshop, one for the horizontal and one for the vertical. But for now, we'll just stick with these horizontal images. What I need to do is I need to open one of these so that I can create the action in Photoshop. So I'm just going to right mouse click or you could control click on the Mac. I'm going to say edit in and then choose Photoshop CS4. What that does is that renders that DNG file, that raw file, into a Photoshop document and here it is in Photoshop. Now, the action that I need to create needs to resize this image so that it's the correct size. It needs to select the image, copy it to the clipboard, and then I'm going to open up the edge file and then paste this image in that will be on the, on the clipboard. So let's go ahead and walk through that. In my actions palette, I'm going to create a new set of actions and I'll just call this TCP, the complete picture. And inside this set, I'm going to create a new action by clicking on the new action icon. We will call this add edge and save it inside of this set. Excellent, when I hit record, Everything I do now, Photoshop will keep track of and it will make it a part of this action. So the first thing I'll do is select image and then image size and I'm going to change this to 6 by 4 at 300 pixels per inch. And the reason that I chose that is because that is the size of my edge file. Since all of these images were photographed um, with my digital camera, I happen to know that the aspect ratio is 2 by 3 and therefore I'm making this 6 by 4. If some of my images were different sizes, then I might want to use the crop tool as opposed to the image size tool. But for this, the image size tool will work just fine. Go ahead and click OK. We can see on my actions palette here that it's added that command. And now all I need to do is a quick select all to select the whole image. I'll go to edit and copy this. That's going to copy it to the clipboard. And then we can do a file and then close. And I'm going to close this file without saving it. Now we can see all of those steps have been recorded. Now I need to open up the template. So I'll use Command O or Control O on Windows to open. And I will simply navigate to find my edge file. And here it is. So we'll open that up into Photoshop. You can see that it's a multi-layered document. Now all I need to do is paste. So we can choose edit and then paste and it pastes in that photograph. Of course it's at the right size because we took care of that with the image size command. But I need to move it down in my layers panel. I need to move it down one layer so that it's underneath the hue saturation. But I don't want to click on it and drag it because sometimes when you record actions, when you click on a layer it records that layer's name. And you don't always want that because layers aren't always named the same thing. So I'll use a keyboard shortcut instead. I'll use Command Left Bracket in order to move that layer down in my layer stack. So now it's down here at the bottom and it has this hue and saturation adjustment layer affecting it. Excellent. That's all I really want to do except, of course, I need to save this. So we'll do a save as, otherwise it would save over that template file. So I'll do a save as for now. We'll save it as test and we'll just save it to the desktop. I'll click save and now we'll close this file. Excellent. We're finished recording the action. So on my actions palette, let's go ahead and click on the, the stop recording icon right there. Now, how do we get this action so that Lightroom understands it and can see it? Well, what we need to do is we need to turn the action into a droplet. Basically, the droplet is what contains all of the, the batch commands, and it's fairly simple. All we need to do is go to File, Automate, and then Create the Droplet. 
The droplet is its own file. It's an executable file, and you can save it wherever you want. In a minute, we'll put it in the right location so that Lightroom can see it. But for now, let's just save it on our desktop. And we will save it as our add edge droplet so that we know what it is. We'll click Save. And now we need to set up all of these different options. So we need to tell it which action to play. So we want to play the add edge action in the the complete picture set, perfect. The override action open commands. We don't want to check that on because look at, in our action we have an open command. I, I need that to be part of my action, so we'll leave this unchecked. Include all subfolders, we don't need to even worry about that because we're not dealing with subfolders. Suppress file open options dialog. Um, I guess I could turn that on just because if there was an open dialog box like, I don't know, sometimes if I start, really it's more if I start from bridge and it brings up the camera raw dialog box, I'd want to suppress that. Um, since I'm starting with Lightroom, it's kind of irrelevant, but it won't hurt to check it on. And suppress color profile warnings. That, that's just in case, you know, if I was batch processing like 500 images, you know, I'd start my action and then probably leave for the night and it would just be my luck that, you know, the eighth image would come up with a profile warning and stop the whole thing. So I just say suppress the color profile warning so that it can move on and batch process all the files even if there's a problem. All right, for destination, I definitely want to save these images to a folder. So let's go ahead and choose a folder. On my desktop, we'll just create a new folder called Edges Added. All right, so this is the folder where the edges will have been added. I'll select Create and then Choose. I need to override the Action Save As commands. I'm not even going to read that to you. I'm just going to say Don't Show Again. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm overriding this Save command. Now, when you record a Save command as part of an action, you're doing two things. First of all, you're saving to a specific location, and second of all, you're saving as a file format. So, the file format will still remain, but what I'm doing here is I'm overriding where I'm going to save the file. So I'm going to save it exactly where I told it, right above, in that Edges Added folder. I do need to rename these files, because if we think about it, as the action progresses, right, it opens the file from Lightroom, right? Lightroom's going to export the files. They'll open in Photoshop. We'll do the uh, image size, select all, copy and close the original file, and then we'll open the template file. If I don't rename each one of these images, it's just going to save over my original template document. So that would not be good. So what I'll do is I will keep the original document name, plus then I'll go ahead and add something that makes this unique, like maybe a two-digit serial number or something. Or I could add some custom text, but I do need something that will change. So we will add a two-digit serial number, and then we'll go ahead and put that extension back on there. And we get a little preview of what that would look like right up here in the example area. All right, excellent. So those are the batch processing settings that I'm storing inside of this droplet. I'll go ahead and click OK, and now we can return back to Lightroom. So let's scoot over to Lightroom, and I have now all of these images. We can go ahead and select all of them, actually. And I want to export them, so I will click on my Export button. And then in the Export dialog box, I'm going to export these to a specific folder, because Lightroom has to actually build the files, the Photoshop files or TIFF files, whatever you have your setup to build. It's got to actually save them somewhere before it hands them off to Photoshop. So let's go ahead and choose our desktop as the place to save them. And then maybe what we want to do is put them in a subfolder that's called something like, you know, exported. And that way I'll know after I'm done exporting and Lightroom hands these off to Photoshop and the action is run, the action will be saving the files in the process folder. So I can just throw away this exported folder when I'm finished. Okay, as far as file settings go, let's go ahead and leave them as Photoshop files. Probably don't need 16-bit because we're doing this kind of edge effect that kind of lowers the quality anyway. So let's do 8-bit. We're not going to resize it. We're not going to sharpen it. We don't need to minimize the embedded metadata or anything like that. But what we do need to do is somehow make Lightroom aware of that droplet. So right here under post-processing, I'm going to tell Lightroom to go to the Export Actions folder now. All that does is it opens up the Export Actions folder in your operating system. This is where you need to put the droplet. So let's open up a new window here. Go to the desktop, 
there's my droplet. All I need to do, drag the droplet into the Export Actions folder. Great. We go back to Lightroom. We select the Add Edge droplet here, and we click Export. What Lightroom is going to do is it's going to export those six files, and I can watch the progress bar right up here. So we're exporting those six files. It has to do that first. Then, if Photoshop wasn't running, it would go ahead and launch Photoshop. It's going to open each one of those files and run that action on it. One little word of caution. If you've never worked with droplets before, one of the things you might want to keep in mind is the droplets refer to the action. So don't throw away the action. You still need the action. The droplet just points to the action. So don't get rid of it. It needs it. All right, Photoshop is finished. Let's go back to Lightroom. Ah, we see the original files. Why is that? Because we didn't re-import the processed files, right? We had the option to re-import the exported files from Lightroom, but I don't think we need to bother with that. Instead, what I want to do is I want to make Lightroom aware of the new files. So let's go to the desktop. We will then go to that folder that we just created, which was called Edges Added, and click Choose. We've got our dialog box. We could add things like our metadata, bringing in our copyright, although I'll tell you, because these came from Lightroom, that copyright is already in the file. Let's go ahead and apply the metadata, as well as some keywords, in this case, San Francisco. And the reason that I'm adding these keywords is because, remember, we exported the files from Lightroom. Lightroom exported them with all of our copyright information, all the keyword information, all of that data. But then remember, when we ran that batch process in Photoshop, we actually copied the photo into a new document. So we would have lost all of that copyright and keyword information. So as you bring them back in, or as you make Lightroom aware of those files, you definitely want to add back in your metadata. Then click Import. And now we can see here, it's importing the files. It has now imported those files into Lightroom. We can double click on them. We can see this cool little edge effect that I added, move from one image to the next, and there you have it. So I think you can see how tightly integrated Lightroom and Photoshop are. I mean, if you do any batch processing in Photoshop, the key is making that droplet so that Lightroom can hand off your files and then continue processing, automating your workflow and making you much, much more productive. Excellent. That wraps up this episode of The Complete Picture. My name's Julianne Koss. Thank you for joining me, and I hope to see you again here on Adobe TV.